How's it going guys? Vabov here from GN Tech and welcome to a camera comparison between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Huawei P30 Pro. So I'm recording this with the front-facing cameras on both of these smartphones. 4K resolution on the iPhone 11 Pro Max whereas it's 1080p resolution on the Huawei P30 Pro. But with these samples you can judge how good or bad these phones do when vlogging as well as how they pick up audio from the microphones that are on the phone. So this will give you an overall idea of whether or not you'd use these phones for vlogging or not. But with that being said, I'm now going to move into the primary camera samples from both of these phones to give you guys a holistic view of which phone does the better job in which sort of lighting scenario. So with that being said, Let's move on to that. So when we look at both of these smartphones, they pack some incredible optics. It's a triple camera setup on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, whereas the P30 Pro has a quad camera setup with the additional dedicated depth sensor. On the front, both smartphones pack a single selfie camera with a varying megapixel count, and we just saw how video from both looks. But we'll begin with this first sample, which aims to get an idea of both phones' color profiles. To be honest, the greens and blues are pretty identical, but where the difference comes in is in the brown of the building which looks a bit over sharpened from the Huawei and the reds which are more true to life from the iPhone. There's not much to it and that could be said for the next sample as well. Dynamic range is a bit better from the iPhone here if you have a look at the details in the background and the overall picture has a bit more sharpness and vibrancy which is accurate to the conditions around. For the Huawei it seems to be focusing more on making the greens in the foreground more vibrant. Unlike the iPhone, there is an AI mode on the Huawei which normally tends to saturate colors and make them even more vibrant, but in this case it made little to no difference. Here's a look at the natural depth of field capabilities from both the primary cameras. When taking this photo, it's worth noting that the iPhone was able to lock onto the tree bark with no problems, whereas from the Huawei, you had to tap to focus. But for what we are testing, I like the shallow depth of field from the Huawei because it makes the subject stand out more which is what we're going for here, but if you look at the iPhone, the tree bark seems to have an extra bit of sharpness to it. Now, we took this primarily to compare dynamic range right against the sun, and due to the iPhone's color processing, the photo comes out looking natural. The edge of the building on the Huawei sways towards a sharp red color, which is not the most true to life representation. So with that, let's move to testing the zoom on both phones. We'll start at one time zoom or standard where the instant difference is in the color profiles. While the cooler P30 Pro looks good, the warmer one from the iPhone is the one that is more color accurate and true to life. We're focusing on the building right in the middle, so at two times zoom, this is our result. If anything, the iPhone looks to be doing the better job here with detail retention, and so we'll go in further at three times. In this case, the sharper looking photo definitely seems to be from the Huawei, but that could be because of the color profile difference we talked about earlier. We can go in further at 5 times zoom where the Huawei sample is sharper with more details compared to the iPhone, but it is impressive to see the iPhone holding up so well. Remember, the iPhone only has a 2 times optical zoom lens, whereas the Huawei has a 5 times optical zoom lens. Lastly, this is at 10 times zoom where the Huawei's hybrid zoom technology comes into play and crushes the iPhone's photo. In fact, you can even zoom in up to 50 times on the Huawei, which is just a great feature to have, and you can capture some crazy pictures with it, like this one of the Superman that keep Burj Khalifa shining every day. Anyways, back from that small diversion, let's take a look at portrait samples. Between these two, the clear difference comes in color processing. The iPhone's colors are just way more natural compared to the Huawei's. Although the Huawei does have an edge when it comes to edge detection if you look at towards the top right of the image. Both phones have a wide angle portrait option where at face value the iPhone's colors are incredible. But if you look at the slight details when it comes to edge detection, you'll notice that the part near the inner elbows are not being blurred out by the iPhone, which has been taken care of by the P30 Pro and this difference could be due to the P30 Pro's extra depth sensor. We also wanted to test the cameras in very harsh light conditions away from the shadows where again, the iPhone skin processing reigns superior over the P30 Pro, with the P30 Pro making my face look a lot paler than it is. Similarly, there is a wide angle mode here which again the iPhone dominates but I did notice a small artifact that creeped up on both phones on the right side near my neck. 
I don't know what it is, but it shouldn't be in the photo as far as I know. Away from human portraits, let's take a look at portraits of objects. The Huawei's version has a greenish tinge to it, whereas the iPhone's is once again true to life and sharper. But again, the iPhones missed out on edge detection, especially if you look through the chain, which the Huawei has captured. And again, this could be the depth sensor coming into play. Here's the same photo with the wide angle mode turned on where the iPhone really struggles with the chain on the left side, whereas the Huawei has done a phenomenal job. Let's also test the dedicated wide angle lenses from both phones. Here's an image at the standard zoom where I notice a lot going on with color profiles, with the iPhone maintaining the natural look. With the wide angle lens, both phones show a change of color profiles, but it is less from the iPhone. Plus, the overall photo looks more natural and true to life from the iPhone compared to the P30 Pro. With that covered, let's talk selfies. Here's a look at the standard ones from both where the color accuracy is with the iPhone. To add, you get a wide angle selfie option as well with the iPhone, something the Huawei does not have. With the portrait modes, once again, the colors are better from the iPhone, but edge detection is definitely better on the Huawei, judging by the processing going around the hair on the iPhone. Also, it's worth noting that the iPhone does not support wide angle portrait selfies, and we're not sure if they'll be added in a future software update or not. To really test the front facing camera, we tried taking a selfie with the harsh afternoon sun as the background. It's actually impressive both phones managed this so well, but if you look at the color accuracy, it's once again the iPhone. Of course, you get a wide angle mode, which for this picture is quite useful, but when portrait mode is enabled, the Huawei seems to be blowing out a few details in the background, whereas the iPhones maintained everything very well. Next up, we have this indoor sample from both phones where the warmth of the scene is better captured on the iPhone. If you look at the far side of the room, the detailing from the window is completely blown out on the Huawei, whereas the iPhone retains more of it. We also tested a really close-up image from both phones where Huawei's optics are quite impressive. The sharpness and detailing to the picture is more than what the iPhone can offer, but at the expense of a deviation in colors. In this sample, that is more pronounced, with the Huawei artificially saturating all the colors on screen, which to the audience may look good, and quite frankly, people may perceive it to be the better looking image, but it's not the most accurate portrayal of colors. And now for some nighttime samples. Here's a look at both cameras using the default modes. Huawei's image is sharper with more pronounced colors, but the color science on the iPhone is more true to life. With night mode, the enhancement is definitely there on both phones. From a detailed perspective, the Huawei is better, but from a color standpoint, the iPhone is in front. Interestingly, the iPhone allows you to toggle the duration you need to keep the phone steady for night mode, and in this next sample, the maximum duration you could choose was bumped up from 2 seconds in the prior one to 4 seconds in this one. Here, the iPhone standard camera actually seems to be performing better than the Huawei's. With the night mode enabled on both, once again, the enhancements on the iPhone come without sacrificing the realism in colors, and this seems to be the main difference between these two cameras so far. I thought I'd try the cameras out in way more challenging conditions, and here are the results. Both images in terms of detail are quite hard to differentiate, but I'd have to give it to the iPhone once again. And in plenty of light, the iPhone is doing a much better job. The Huawei is capturing a scary infrared glow to the penguins, which they did not have in real life, and with night mode enabled, the effect is even more pronounced on the Huawei, and it even starts to creep up on the iPhone. Lastly, we've got this wide angle lens sample from both these phones. This is a general nighttime sample where again the iPhone has the edge. Here's both samples with the wide angle lens where neither is particularly good but Huawei does have a wide angle night mode which makes it look much better than the iPhone sample because it doesn't support night mode in wide angle photos. Switching to selfies, I prefer the Huawei's because they look much sharper and have less noise. While the iPhone has a wide angle mode, the Huawei has a dedicated night selfie feature where again I think that the Huawei is doing a fabulous job. Here's a look at nighttime selfie portraits where I think it's more down to personal preference but I still sway towards the Huawei. Taking a look at video now, here's some footage at 1080p 30fps where detailing is with the iPhone. Footage is a lot more stable when walking but if you switch to a running sample, the stability seems to be about the same. With both phones, you can film in ultra wide which on the iPhone looks to be more consistent in terms of colors. Sharpness looks about the same but if you consider stability, to me, the Huawei actually seems to be more stable than the iPhone in this case. At 4K resolution, the Huawei's video seems to be cropping in a bit more and 
looks better in terms of colors. Where the iPhone is better is with stability, although if you start running, both phones have pretty unstable looking footage, just that the jerks in motion on the iPhone are smoother than that of the Huawei, which has a more haphazard movement. Of course, you can use the wide angle lens on both, where the iPhone definitely has the better video footage quality and stability when walking and even when running, although the difference is hard to pinpoint exactly. It's also worth mentioning here that the iPhone can record 4K video at 60 FPS, something the Huawei P30 Pro cannot do. We also took the phones out for video samples at night, where at 1080p 30fps using the standard angle, the iPhone is just much better. On the Huawei, you get a lot of light fringing, where lights turn purple when they're not supposed to be. Even when using the wide angle lens, the iPhone has smoother looking video, with less jitters. Moving to 4K resolution using the standard lens, you do start to see some fringing on the iPhone as well, although it's much less pronounced. On the wide angle lens too, the iPhone combined with its superior color processing and stability just comes out looking the better of the two. So that's about it for this comprehensive look between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Huawei P30 Pro's cameras. Do let us know what you think down in the comments about both of these phones and make sure to subscribe for more comparisons coming up. Thanks for watching, this was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!